from a traditional Dutch industry to one which began in Asia and developed in this country from the 17th century. In this lovely setting, the double cube room at Wilton House, the ninth Earl of Pembroke introduced the now famous Wilton carpets over 300 years ago. Today, they blend perfectly with the treasures of the Pembroke family. The industry was begun at this weaving factory, so the story goes, by two master weavers from France smuggled into this country in wine barrels by the 9th Earl. And today the original hand looms are still being used side by side with their modern counterparts. Craftsmen like George Shergold make easy work of a job that needs skill and care. After selecting the hanks of wool he requires, they are cut on a handmade tuft cutter. Gradually the carpet takes shape. Another example of the place that still exists in modern industry for the craftsmen, with their traditional centuries-old methods, like Gertrude Foyle. Normally, she ties between eight and 9,000 knots during a nine-hour day, although this is the way it's done slowly. These were the methods of the early masters, but the invention in 1801 of the automatic Jacquard loom and the introduction of steam power 20 years later speeded up production and lowered prices. Although the machinery of today works on exactly the same principle as the handmade loom, the speeded up process enables 213,000 knots to be made in a day and 180 miles of carpet to be produced in a year at this factory alone. From Wilton, we moved to Axminster, where another pioneer of the carpet industry, Thomas Whitty, started weaving 200 years ago. And this is the site of his original factory. The bells of the parish church were pealed to summon folk from far and wide to the congregational chapel, where his early carpets were often put on show. One of these was bought by the Sultan of Turkey for a thousand pounds. Wilton and Axminster, these are towns which have become household names. <laughs> 